The automated driving problem is not a trolley problem problem. Okay, in a lot of these videos, as always, I've got some speculation, estimation, and approximation. These are just my ideas. But first, before we get into this, I'll just give you a little replay on what is actually the trolley problem so that we know what we're talking about. So the trolley problem is this idea that would you switch the points in a railway yard to save some number of people, say five people, that's the classic one, but you'll, by doing this, run over another person with the, there's a car, the, a train car, a trolley, if you like, and it's rolling down the hill. Um, so you get to save five people by switching the points so that it goes off the line that it was on, rescuing five people who were looking the other way and wouldn't have known that the silent train is about to run them over. But one other person who would have been safe if you take no action um, now gets run over because the trolley runs onto a different rail, runs them down, and it's a, you know, it's a bad day for that person, but a good day for those other five people that you saved. So this is a, some kind of ethical, moral question um, about whether you would take action or not take action, and is it better to save five people and kill one other person? Uh, that's what that's about. Somehow people think that automated cars are going to have to make these sorts of decisions. Um, yeah, so I'll just recap to why I started making this video in the first place. So it's 2020 and here we are. I have found another article online about comparing automated cars to the trolley problem. Uh, so I'll just uh, read what I wrote. In the last couple of years, I've seen this article come up again and again, and now it's 2020, and I look outside my window to see flying cars all the time, and I cannot figure out why people are online arguing about whether car AI should drive off a cliff to save a pet that runs out across the road. And um, no one knows why that pet lives on a cliff, or... Um, what cave it was going to go and explore once it gets across the other side of the road and um, why exactly all of that is on a mountain pass and I don't know maybe the pet just likes mountain climbing it's totally into spelunking and um, therefore oddly um, it seems to be that AI cars really enjoy taking people on roller coaster rides down the cliff something to do with um, the AI being taken over um, by the car that's in the movie Christine. Okay, so one of these things that I saw, um, and this is subject to my memory, I, I saw a university that had gone through the effort of setting up this uh, website. So the survey from a university that asked a couple of dozen of scenario questions in this situation, should I run over some combination of seniors out shopping for gifts for the grandchildren or this group of millennials with their pet dogs and um, they, pe they treat those pet dogs as children and so the university wanted to know you know who who's of better value the group of millennials or the group of senior citizens and um, they they were going to use this data. This is all combination versions of the trolley problem. Who gets saved and who gets um, sacrificed in these odd situations? Um, but you know, obviously this is all dumb. <laughs> it's not how you really actually drive a car. Um, and um, so what I'm saying is this is dumb because. AI driving cars is not a trolley problem. I really hope that no one drives in such a way that they are constantly estimating who or what should be saved or run over on the way to the burger store to get a burger with a slice of pineapple and some bacon and a fried egg plus a soda plus some chips. AI cars should not drive like that. They should drive more like this. 
what they should do is find a clear path of flat road which may or may not be marked with lane markings drive in the direction of traffic appropriate for the country that you're in look at the moving and stationary objects identify the objects if possible note the living things pets and people work out the vectors of all the moving objects move the vehicle on a vector on the flat clear path that avoids any moving object or stationary object or the projected possible vectors of the moving and stationary objects and drive at a speed below the speed limit on that section of road appropriate for the weather conditions avoiding all the overlapping vectors of objects ensuring that your speed is so low that you always have an escape vector to to a clear and safe part of the road ahead or be able to use the brakes to slow to zero speed before any vectors can overlap of course this means that something bad can arise but i'd guess that if it does then the vehicle will be moving so slow that mostly nothing bad will happen and that mostly the thing that will be crashed into will be other cars hopefully with safety devices such as safety belts and airbags and i hope that the accident won't happen with anybody moving too quickly ai vehicles just have to be safer than the average human driver and in this way they can work as driver assistance features and to be some multiple better than human drivers to work independently from the human drivers my opinion is that cars should not take evasive action driving outside of the clear path or roadway i'm not saying that cars cannot depart their lane to avoid a collision but ai cars can do that way better than human drivers can because their sensors will not likely have blind spots like human drivers do so i figure ai cars will be better at finding safe escape paths and driving around objects just in these diagrams here i've used these like green cones to show the safe paths that the cars can drive onto and the little the little red triangles are dangerous places for the cars to drive into and the circles around the objects is where is that thing likely to move to in the amount of time that the uh, vehicle will be passing so people don't normally dart out onto roads but pets do quite often dart out onto roads so you have to give cat a better um, a better space buffer around the cat than you would give a person because especially adults aren't, aren't going to run nilly uh, willy-nilly out onto a road back to the initial assumptions about ai and driving being like the trolley problem the answer is always to drive more conservatively unless you know that it's safe to drive fast just like an actual person driving in a reasonable way the problem with drivers is that they drive too fast much of the time but the drivers just think they're driving at a reasonable speed if you're on a motorway you can reasonably drive fast if you're in a city street with unpredictable moving obstacles all you have to do is drive so slow that if something vectors towards you you have an escape vector available that does not interfere with the other moving objects of the predicted vectors of these objects or their escape vectors you should also avoid um, stationary known stationary objects like pets and people um, they should be protected too so that you know that's what i'm saying they should have those spaces around them i figure that cars can make a priority list of the types of objects um, from bad to hit to less bad to hit so in some cars there's there's some development for automated cars where they where the cars don't actually understand the things around them 
but other implementations of automated cars are using actual AI pattern recognition to understand all the objects that are around them. So they know what a bicycle is, they know what another car is, they know what a road cone is, that kind of thing. So in this in the smart method of understanding you know doing a scene analysis and then actually understanding what the objects are in the scene you can actually make very good plans about how things are going to move whereas if all you're doing is mapping the objects around you and just seeing how they're moving it it's not it's not very smart because all you, all you have is vector information not information that's inherent to the thing so like if you see a cat you know that cats can run out on a road and often do as you approach them but but uh, you know, uh, um, a road cone isn't going to suddenly run out in the middle of the road. Um, that just just doesn't work that way. So, so I, th I think the more successful approach to automated driving is, is a actual scene analysis, which requires actual real AI to identify the objects. Um, hang on, where was I? Um, yeah, so I figure that you can make a list of. Um, the priorities of the types of objects from bad to hit to less bad to hit and um, this is not an ethical trade-off problem like the trolley problem um, so um, I made this list and what did I say oh uh, yeah so I started with um, what you want to protect is unprotected people animals pets pedestrians and cyclists because like if you if you drive your car into these things they don't have anything actually protecting them from being hit by a car um, and then the next thing you don't want to hit is um, is big trees because crashing into very solid trees is basically as bad as moving in uh, driving into immovable concrete um, you want to avoid vehicles with vectors that are head on to you. You want to avoid large animals like horses, cows, deer and kangaroos. Um, because those things, if you crash into them, they come through the window screen and that's extremely dangerous for you. Also, it's just terrible to run over animals. Um, you want to avoid solid posts like concrete or wooden power poles. Now, in, in some places um, where I live, there's been a big safety program that all the way along highways, the all the poles are being replaced with ones which shear off if you crash into them. So, so if you're driving and you you just sort of go off the side of the highway, and you run into a, a lamp post, the lamp posts are now being designed to just snap off, um, which is much safer for the occupants of the car because what you really want to avoid while driving a car is coming to a very sudden halt. Um, that's not good. Um, and then another one is um, unknown stationary objects, possibly solid and essentially immovable. So um, the other problem is, is that um, unknown objects can obscure people and animals. So for example, um, a tent and large cardboard boxes, um, though there can be obviously there can be people or things in a tent and large cardboard boxes um, you know people or children or animals can be hiding behind those or even inside them uh, so you don't want to run those over and um, shipping containers and skip bins um, because they're just extremely solid you don't want to run into those um, and then uh, one thing that you can do um, if you if you were trying to avoid a person on a bike um, you you might in a not a very high speed situation it might be actually more desirable to bump into a moving car that's moving in the same direction as you because the if you just run in you know over a person on a bike that's going to be terrible but you could you could potentially bump into another car and um, the driver or the computer driving that car might be able to react and get out of your way. Um, like so if you encroach into another lane that car might be able to move over and actually give you space so sometimes there's better and worse choices um, that that could be one of the closest things to a trolley problem but I, I don't I don't really see it that way um, uh, another other things you want to um, avoid is actual known objects, road road signs and traffic lights. Those are the kinds of things that snap off safely. And then um, road road cones, small dustbins and wheeled rubbish bins, all of those things. But 
But this is not a trolley problem. You're not choosing whether to save a person on a bus called a killer road cone. Um, there, there are some priorities of... Yeah, you, there's always going to be priorities. Like if you're driving the car and, you know, um, a rabbit runs out on the road, like a, like in my country, rabbits are just pests. So like there's sort of like really... Although it's bad to, you know, just generally it's bad for your karma to kill animals. But I'm not saying that you should um, swerve around a rabbit and potentially lose control of the car when you're driving out of the country, especially in a place where, where rabbits uh, are a pest animal. If you're moving, going slowly in a city, um, and a car cr cuts across your path, like it just runs through an intersection or something, um, you may be able to drive around it, in which case you should do so. But if the footpaths are crowded, and it's then it's best to brake and drive, the car, drive into the car that cuts across your path, um, partially because it's, it's the other driver's fault, and because panic steering the vehicle um, into a, a more dangerous situation is also bad. So panic steering puts other people at risk. It's, you know, as a human driver, you don't normally see all the things around you. But an automated car that's going to do a scene analysis will actually know whether or not it's safe to drive around. The AI or the autonomous driving system will be able to make better choices usually than a human would. Um, well, at least I project in the future it will. Um, on a country road moving at moderate speed, you want to avoid a head-on. If someone drives into your lane, but driving into a big tree or a ravine by panic steering is not a great outcome either. Um, but this is not really a trolley problem either. On fast moving two-way highway, there ought to be clear spaces to drive into to avoid objects on the road. Um, you know, like, um, so we have uh, what are called clearways, which are just um, graded flat pieces of, of ground, sometimes with gravel on there, or maybe even uh, just short grass, that is a better choice to drive onto than to hit some objects on a road. On a fast moving two way highway, there ought to be clear spaces to drive onto to avoid objects on the roadway or um, avoiding center line crossing vehicles. AI will likely detect this before a human driver would and take a safe vector over a safe pathway while braking and steering. On motorways, sometimes a kangaroo or a deer is just going to arrive in the lane without warning because those animals can leap very long distances. Um, so, so what you want to do is drive slower at night um, in Australia, you're going to want to have kangaroo bars on your vehicle if you drive a lot of, in, the, in the night, which a lot of people who live in the country do. Um, and you're not always going to be able to avoid um, accidents, but neither can a computer unless it's driving very, very slowly. So you're going to have to have some risk trade-off there. Um, also, another thing you're going to want to do is drive slowly in smoke and fog. Um, and of course, an automated car is going to have to know not to drive into fires and lakes. I heard that there were some tests where they were testing um, some automated driving systems and they they see a, a lake or, or, the, or a beach as being just very flat, empty space. And so that vehicle <laughs> foolishly just drives into the water. Um, so that's not that's not a great outcome. So hopefully hopefully you'll get the, those sorts of things ironed out before humans are actually subjected to to driving in such cars. Um, and, and another important thing is you don't want to um, cross moving flood water. Um, one one mistake that human drivers make all the time is they just see a tiny amount of water flowing over a road that they know quite well. But but if you if you're if you're driving um, at, at much speed, um, you will um, ac like aquaplane. But swiftly flowing shallow water will push on the sides of your tires and, and make your car slide off the road. So some people um, make this mistake all the time. They just see some water that's only, you know, um, 
10 or 15 centimetres deep, you know, a few inches deep, and and when they drive through it, the car just slides sideways off the road, and you end up you end up flooding your car in a ditch. Uh, if if you're lucky, you're just going to ruin your car, um, but sometimes you'll just go into a much deeper ditch than what you're expecting, and and that's not a great outcome either. Um, Another thing that automated cars are going to have to do is they're actually going to have to stop driving if the whole road seems to be missing. So one thing that quite often happens in my country is you have a big rainstorm and you get a slip. So so either a bunch of clay slides down, and I mean like hundreds of tons of clay slides down a cliff and ends up on the road, or else the, the river that's down by the side of the road erodes out... Um, erodes out the soil from under the road and the roadway just collapses into the river and you, it's quite quite common for a big storm to maybe wipe out um, many meters of asphalt um, in, in a road in the country. Isn't it always possible to drive so slow that all obstacles can creep and collide with zero damage, but all objects can move slowly until they're safely out of each other's vectors and then increase speed? In this way, nothing actually bad can happen. That's a question I always ask myself when I'm thinking of this problem. Um, from memory, about 10% of car accidents are caused by vehicle failure, bad brakes, steering linkage problems, tire blowouts mostly. In many cases, I'd expect that automated driving might be able to resolve the failure because it might test the brakes before you actually drive and not panic in the event of a tire blowout. As cars get more advanced, they could use the motor for brakes, so electric cars often do this. You can, you can use um, uh, active electric braking um, and in the more advanced vehicles, you could use individual wheel motors to control steering in emergency situations. So even even if you had a steering failure while driving, you could you could use um, vectoring of of the power to the wheels. So this is a bit like um, uh, there's a technology that has this uh, what is it called ESP um, electronic stability platform. Uh, what it does is it monitors the rotation of each tire on your car and it makes sure that the ground that you're covering matches the number of rotations of the wheel and if it, if it if, a, if if one wheel is rotating much faster than the car is moving it can apply the brakes to the wheel to stop the wheel from skidding um, but if you're in a situation where you had a, a steering problem then then you would end up with some wheels um, perhaps sliding and you could have a you could have a situation where the computer would be able to compensate by using um, advanced features inside the car not in a normal way that you would normally steer but just to perhaps help um, keep the vehicle under control while you stop um, Except if a vehicle is moving at, at speed and something extraordinary happens, there can be an accident. But we don't need to make AI decisions to evaluate who dies and who lives. We just need to do a vector maths and basic visual object analysis to avoid the, the worst possible impacts. And that's why we call an accident accident. Trees can fall, cars can slip on ice, tires blow out, many unknown unknowns. But we mitigate these with ABS, ESP, airbags, weather analysis, proper planning and vehicle shapes. There are some journeys that we should not make when the conditions are not safe, like staying at home on an unexpected snow day when you don't have winter tires on your car. Drive slowly in the rain and on very windy days. Drive slowly if it's windy and you're around trees um, because trees can drop branches and fall across a lane. So now you have an idea of what my view of how automated driving should work. You would find that for the most part, our vehicles will be driving slower than human drivers 
and I think this is the case because I want the cars to be safe and the reason why human drivers can drive faster than AI is that humans have many hours of experience. Humans inherently understand what they're seeing um, and this is in a way that AI might never be able to achieve um, the, the human understanding of the, the whole picture of what you're seeing while you're driving. And that the other problem, <laughs> the reason why humans drive so fast is that they just seriously underestimate how dangerously they're driving. They're just driving way too fast in most situations. Humans have an ability to drive in a follow me mode where they have more of a collective understanding of the situation on a stretch of road. Let me explain. If there's a lane of flowing traffic, every driver is contributing to the understanding of the situation on the road. If it is safe to drive fast, many of the drivers slowly increase their speed and we experience the idea that the vehicle in front of me sees no dangers so they can drive fast and therefore I can drive fast. If the vehicle ahead sees dangers, many vehicles will tap their brakes or slow down a bit or coast the car so it gets to a slower speed and this information flows back to the cars behind when we see the brake lights and the vehicles ahead of us. Um, we notice the cars getting closer together so we slow down. The information about the road ahead is flowing back through the queue of traffic. AI cars can pick up on some of these cues too and drive to match the human drivers. Mostly human drivers just drive too fast and I expect that as more driver assistance aids are incorporated into more and more cars, the average traffic speed will become smoother and more consistent and then slower due to no human drivers around setting a high confidence pace. So, so think about this. Um, I think that at the moment adaptive cruise control and lane keeping assist serves to match the speed of the vehicle ahead even if the vehicle ahead is driving too fast in some cases so so if your car is just playing follow the leader if the car in front of you is driving fast then your car will drive fast too i have a hunch that this is why some drivers find these driver assistance features too scary the 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 features are ins, insufficiently conservative um, for some more conservative and safer drivers. In the long run, if if all the cars are driving in an auto automated mode, there aren't going to be human drivers setting a high pace. So more and more, the cars will just tend to this kind of conservative driving pace. Oh, this is just a little diagram sort of showing what happens sort of with that follow me thing. You see, if, if, if the first driver sees a cat way off in the distance, they might indicate and go around it, and the cars behind will notice that the cars in front are indicating and changing lanes, and you'll wonder why, and then you'll realise, oh, it's because there's a pet um, sitting on the edge of the road, and uh, everybody's making way around it. So that that's just one of the one of the follow the leader kind of things. I still don't think this is a trolley problem. Okay, anyway, um, thanks for watching. This is just some of uh, my ideas on automated vehicles. Um, again, my channel is Daryl Talks About New Zealand. Um, I've got um, quite a few videos about um, some reviews on electric cars and just other strange ideas and, and weird little art ideas that I've had as well. Um, I also have a few um, videos on uh, building uh, construction projects of building new highways around New Zealand. Um, I always just find those quite interesting. So when I go and look at one, I make a little video so other people can see those too. Um, thanks again for watching.
and still not a trolley problem.